start start dare yes sir your ppts are also visible okay we'll start by 3 o'clock sir we can start it now it's already 3 sir okay okay fine so let's talk about the last unit of the course advanced database management system that is the unit number 14 and we are talking about database applications basically the database applications are not exactly covered in this uh, unit we are talking about various categories of databases based on the timing required Uh, basically there are two type of uh, four four type of applications we will discuss first we'll talk about active databases okay then we'll talk about temporal databases timing based databases then we'll talk about multimedia type of databases how those type of items are stored etc so that is more or less a theoretical aspect some Uh, portion regarding triggers and curses that we will discuss in practical aspect also now suppose you load a web page these are the topic basically we are going to discuss in today's class and the today's theory lecture that is unit number 14 active databases temporal databases multimedia databases and video databases now just before starting the actual topic let's talk about suppose uh, you open a web page okay there are certain activities you perform before loading the page that we call it as before loading the page what you want to do okay after loading the page when the page has been loaded fully into your system what activities you want to do and there are certain activities when you leave the page and move on to or navigate on to some other page what activities you want to do these type of pages are known as active pages that there are certain activities you want to execute before something you want to do during and some after similarly now you take the example of a database clear now you see that uh, what is the role of the constructor in the actual object oriented programming what's the role of the constructor the role of the constructor in object oriented programming is to initialize the object there are certain operations that you want to perform before the object is actually existed in the memory clear there are certain things that you want to perform as long as the object is in the memory and when the object is destroyed <coughs> or no longer in the memory then there are certain activities you have to perform same way suppose there is a table table has an attributes there are certain things you want to add there are records you want to add into the database suppose the record you added into the database before adding the record you want to do something during as long as the record is there in the memory there are certain activities you want to perform and when the record is deleted again there are certain activities you want to create the log at that moment etc so these type of databases are known as active databases so this is the design principles for active rules active database is a database consisting of a set of triggers in uh, we call them as events also you can say you know that what is event handling programming in java or in any other language event suppose you press a button an event is generated okay there is some piece of code associated with that event that needs to be executed something you want to perform before something you want to perform after all these are events before loading the page on load paging 
after exiting these are all active rules now trigger is opposite of event you can say or action that you want to perform so a trigger is a specially uh, type of stored procedure stored method stored function what is procedure procedure has an executable instructions that automatically runs when an event occurs in that database server the question is what is an event here suppose you update a record event occurs clear if you delete a record the event occurs if you add a record the event occurs and if you are come if you know in java pressing a button generates an action event similarly moving mouse here and there generates a mouse event each event has a trigger associated with it that is a piece of code that is executed when and if the database is associated with these type of with several type of stored procedures we call them as active databases so dml triggers run when a user tries to modify data through data manipulation so these are data manipulation commands insert update delete statements on a table or a view so in such databases dbms initially verifies whether the trigger specified in the statement that modifies the database is activated or not prior to executing the statement if the trigger is active means needs to be ex executed then dbms executes the conditional part because each trigger has an if then else part associated with it then executes the action part only if the specified condition is true so it is possible to activate more than one trigger with a single statement means if you want to execute multiple triggers before during activation or suppose i will say that if you i just want to take you on to a java uh, i just want to ask you a question similarly clear anybody can i raise the hand to answer it when button is pressed if you are comfortable in java or you know something about java you can answer it suppose you press a button which method is executed at the back end raise the hand if you have know the answer yeah ravi ranjan yeah please unmute yourself and answer sir button event click when you click a button action performed method is executed at the back end because pressing a button generates an action event each event has a listener associated with it okay and that listener method is action performed but the uh, worry i am telling you is that there is only one method executed when you press a button that is action performed but when you press a mouse when you move a mouse here and there mouse event is generated okay mouse event has four methods associated with it mouse moved mouse clicked mouse double clicked mouse exited mouse entered all these methods execute simultaneously whenever the mouse event is generated so the same thing i would like to tell you here that if a trigger is active means if an event is generated you may trigger a single stored procedure you may trigger a single trigger you may activate a single trigger or you may activate multiple triggers also so there are some actions that so there are some actions that can be recognized by certain events automatically 
So what is active database? If I ask you, explain it in one line. Active database is a database that is associated with triggers, stored procedures. Clear, whenever you execute any type of data manipulation command, certain set of triggers needs to be activated based upon the stored procedures. These type of databases are known as active databases. Now, Starburst, Oracle, DB2, all these are This is an example of an active database. Oracle is an example of active database. DB2 is an example of DB2, if you remember. Oracle is also the proprietary of IBM. Similarly, DB2, database 2, that is also a proprietary of Oracle. So Starburst. So Starburst demands the process of defining rules in Starburst. That is process of writing statement level rules as only these kinds of rules are permitted in starburst suppose these are the three active rules we call them as one r1s r2s and r3s these are three active rules now create rule that is the rule number one on imply on imply means that is the table name so you are creating a rule Name of the rule is total salary one on employee when inserted. This means when the record inserted, if exists, that is the condition. What exists? Select star from inserted clear where D number is not null. D number means department number, employee number is not null. Then update department as D, set D total salary equals to D plus total salary plus selects, sorry, someone salary from inserted as I, where D number minus ID number. These are the commands basically. So these are the active rules. This is R1 as active rule that you want to create a rule. Basically, more details we are not going in this one because that is beyond the scope of this course. Just from the abstract level, if I ask you a simple question, what this rule tells? This rule tells that when something is inserted into the employee table and if its department number is not null, then total salary is to be updated as follows. So now whenever you insert something into the employee, this trigger is automatically triggered. But first it will check the condition. If the check condition is true, then it will execute the true. Similarly, you can define the rules in second one also. That is the create rule. Clear when updated salary. Clear if exists, select star from new updated where department number is not null or exists, select star from old updated where D number is not null, then update department as D set D total salary equals to D total salary plus these are the different commands that is create rule we call them in. that is the first rule we call them as the create rule also that is create number two rule and this is the create rule number three. These are the rules that you can use. These are the rules, these are the methods to create the rules or triggers. Now this you look at it. Is it a procedure or not? Doesn't it not contain certain executable statements? The answer is yes. So they will be executed when the rule satisfies. Um, next uh, active database, um, next example is Oracle. That is also an active database. So this, the model which is utilized to state active database rule is known as event condition action. That is ECA. Event occurs, condition true, then action performed. 
okay and that is basically event delegation model is followed in java so eca model contain rules which has three elements event generate rules events in this rule are basically operations for data based updation so in this rule events are openly implemented to the db the second element decides whether the generated rule should be executed or not as the rule action is generated in the first step so there is an option in the condition the third element explains the rule the rule action is basically a set of sql statements that needs to be executed so this is also an active database example third one example is db2 as i have already to this is also a proprietary of the relational method server developed by ibm so there are three db2 products that are very familiar db2 for luv l stands for linux unix and windows db2 for mainframe systems that is what we call it as z operating system db2 for i series we call it formally it is known as os 400 series so db2 whether you are using for linux unix or windows product runs on multiple linux and unix distributions and it runs on almost every version of windows including 2017 also so these are the syntax to create trigger in db to create trigger trigger name now before after what does it mean have you seen this type of on page loading on before means it has to be executed before after means after performing the action referencing referencing is the reference name on table name for each row or statement when sql condition is true so this is the trigger name insert delete update references old as old value name new as new value name old table as old value table name and new table as new table name this is the syntax that how you can create a trigger in db2 and uh, active database applications first application permits announcement of condition to happen another application is physical property taking records directly from the physical sensors another application of is that it entails integrity constraints by explaining the types of events that may affect the constraint to be despoiled as well as evaluate the certain conditions that assures constraints or not so these are the applications of the active databases you know that in medical applications mostly the data is generated at run time and there are various sensors attached with the body which are collecting the data clear and as soon as certain condition for example your bp becomes certainly high then it raises the alarm because data is monitored continuously now the next topic is temporal data so i before proceeding further please anybody has any doubt raise the hand please Rakshit, yes, please go ahead. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Yeah. I'm audible, sir. Yeah, very much audible. Sir, can you repeat what is active database once again? Active database single line definition is active database is based upon associated with triggers. okay 
ऑल मॉडर्न डेटाबेसेस आर बेसिकली एक्टिव डेटाबेसेस और एक कल वी हैव डिस्कस्ड स्टार बस्ट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड देन डीबी टू वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अंडरस्टैंड नाउ टेल मी ओके हैव यू और अक्षत आई जस्ट वांट टू आस्क यू अ क्वेश्चन हैव यू डन सम सॉर्ट ऑफ वेब प्रोग्रामिंग यस सर जावा व्हाट आर व्हाट आर एक्टिव वेब पेजेस एक्टिव वेब पेजेस या there see when page is loaded there are certain activities you want to perform before loading the page correct. isn't it correct there are certain activities you want to perform when the page is loaded when you navigate and move on to the next page there are again certain pages that you so before loading on loading exit loading these are nothing but events associated with it when they are automatically executed now you see example i have already discussed suppose in an employee table you want to add certain things okay what is the role of the constructor tell me in object oriented programming no. have you heard the word constructor what is that yes to initiate the object sir no means a constructor code is executed whenever you create an object basically what is the meaning of that one what is the role of the destructor to destroy the to destroy the object there are certain activities we want to perform because objects are allocated in memory at run time before the object becomes active in the memory there are certain activities we want to initialize isn't it the same constructor business is done by triggers okay okay now so in the table you want to add a record there are certain things you want to check before clear you want to initialize certain things automatically for that record now suppose when you want to delete a record you know that what you have to do you have to create a log of that okay clear so the so what is the one liner definition of an active database the database associated with a set of triggers set of events each event has certain action associated with it okay okay you tell me when you press a button what happens in java or in any other language suppose you are doing python when you press a button what uh, happens there is a code associated with that button that gets executed correct sir it may be a single method it may be multiple methods <laughs> clear correct. so yes, this means if it has multiple methods they are executed multiple clear a single event may activate a single method or a single trigger or a single event may generate multiple stored procedures also okay okay thank you so sir. thank you thank you so let's to move on to the next one temporal database what is the meaning of temporal database temporal database means whenever you have to keep the record in the memory it has a time stamp associated with it okay so temporal databases are used to record time reference data no data is referred with equal importance all the time isn't it whatever the scores you have for example in what uh, there are certain courses you registered in the current semester in a four year degree program there are certain courses you registered in the first semester so first semester data is referenced more frequently when you are in the first semester now suppose you are in the eighth semester the reference importance or the referral in uh, what we call it as the reference to the old data becomes or the frequency of using the old data becomes lesser as you move on with the time so temporal databases are used to record time reference data basically majority of the database technologies are temporal for example record keeping function hai inventory administration hai medical record hai and personal hai clear 
Now you tell me what is the how medical time is associated with the, your medical record. You have a history of the medical record associated with you. It may be referenced, but uh, mostly the doctors are interested in looking at the data that reflects your more recent parameters. Not the parameter. Now, for example, what is the BP fluctuation rate that your body has currently that is of more importance to the doctor? rather than what you are observing one year down the line or two years down the line, that doesn't matter. So record keeping function has a time. The simplest logic, if I ask you one liner definition, what is temporal database? The frequency of use of the data is associated with the timestamp. So financial functions, banking, accounting, portfolios, organizations, Clear? Now you see that. How accounts are updated, how uh, income tax are com computed, these are all time-based functions. Okay, now scientific functions mean weather monitoring. Weather monitoring is a 24 by 7 activity, but uh, the, as the data becomes older, you are moving on to some other storage device so that the only more recent data becomes the active database. Similarly, there are certain scheduling functions. Scheduling function means there are many activities that needs to be scheduled, particularly in project organization, hotel management, airline, train reservations. Clear? So, What is temporal database? The database is associated with timestamp. Understand the frequency of the, the use of the database depends upon the timestamp. There are numerous applications where time is an important factor in storing the information, particularly insurance that I have already told you to keep record of accidents and claims, healthcare to maintain patient histories, reservation systems to check the reservation and availability of seats in train, airline, hotel, car, rental, and many more places. Similarly, scientific databases where experiments outcomes need to be stored along with the time that when it was carried out. Clear? So when every stored data has an associated timestamp with it, we call it as the temporal database or the time-based database. Now temporal database forms. So different forms of temporal databases may be there. So temporal databases can be distinguished into various types depending upon the different notions of time. Historical database stores data with respect to valid time. Rollback database stores data with respect to transaction time. A bitemporal database stores data with respect to valid as well as transaction time. Valid time means, suppose I say the record is valid only for six months. Clear after that it will be. Now you see here, whenever you are now, every every hospital maintains the rep uh, medical reports of the patients that are admitted there, but there are only time period associated with it. Okay, if you don't download within those periods, then the data will be destroyed. Means you cannot claim anything from the hospital because they have given you the time period by which they will keep the record. No organization keeps the record forever. After some time, the data is destroyed. So the historical database stores data with respect to valid time. Rollback database stores data with respect to transaction time when the transaction is committed. Okay, or when the transaction is rolled back. Now, a snapshot database stores only a single state of the real world. 
usually the most recent state in context of valid time as well as transaction time. A time DB means database associated with the timestamp. Database stores the history of data with respect to both valid time and transaction time. OK, now suppose I have a salary field. Employee has a salary. You know that salary needs updation either in a, a technical organizations, IT organizations, either it changes after every three months or every four months or every six months or yearly, etc, etc. In government organization, it changes yearly or sometimes when the DA or up, uh, uh, DA rate is increased or HRA is increased at that time also uh, salary revision takes place. Now the salary needs to be updated. So each time you update the salary, you attach a timestamp with it. Then it becomes a temporal database, means database associated with the timestamp. Now, Two more topics are left in unit number 14. That is the multimedia database. How to store the images? How to store a multimedia file, particularly images? All these comes under multimedia database. They are not stored the way your normal data items are stored. For example, date of birth can be stored via date field. Clear? Your salary can be stored via numeric field, which can be an integer field or that can be a double or a float type value, etc. But multimedia files are multimedia data items, particularly images. They are stored in binary large object. They are stored in either C log form or B log form. That is binary large objects. So multimedia database facilitates the user to store as well as generate query for retrieving multimedia information, documents, articles, books, journals, images, drawing pictures, video clips, audio clips. All these comes under the multimedia database. Can you know that uh, even your Excel file can store the data, can store documents? The same way your table can also store all these features. Documents, images, video clips, audio clips. So to make this retrieval fast, the multimedia database must make use of some model to index and manage multimedia sources grounded on the context. To accomplish this task, two approaches can be followed. Based upon automatic analysis of the multimedia sources, it is done to recognize the contents mathematical characteristics or based upon manual identification of the objects and activities of interest in each multimedia source. And later on, depending upon this information, you can create index the sources. You know that there is a proxy server is there basically. How the images are stored along with each record. Can anybody tell me? How to do that? How images are stored in the table? How audio clips are stored in the table or how? Video clips are stored in the table. The answer is via proxy objects. Because each video, if I say you have 1000 records, clear 1000 records may have 1000 video clips associated with it. Each video clip, let's take it as of 1 GB size. Then it has all 1000 GB size memories required in order to load that table. To solve this, because all the video clips may not be required by the user. There is only a proxy object sitting 
representing that video clip in the table. When the user actually requires a video clip, it uses the proxy object associated with it, which actually retrieves the data on the behalf of the user. So that is the proxy. What is the proxy basically? In general terms, if I ask you, proxy is a simple person who acts on the actual person. Understand? Suppose I am not able to go to a meeting, I can send my proxy there who will represent me. So whenever the query comes to me, it actually handled by the proxy. Clear? And these proxies are used everywhere, even in your internet. How this is resolved? There is a proxy server through which you connect and proxy server notes from the actual address where that is located. These are the type of data items that stores maximum amount that takes maximum amount of storage to store. So video database management is that uh, system comprises of open source system. Video database management system research group came up with an extensions and adaptations that were required to support full functionality of the database. The extensions of the key database consists of store management for videos and this is the store management for videos and video pre-processing for content representing and indexing so massive amount of data having real time restrictions are carried out by the buffer managers as well as video database storage so in video database management system the way there is a simple database management system, the same way there is a video database management system. The database buffer zone and the streaming zone are split by the buffer pool. So these are just theoretical topics. So I stop the topic here that you will continue from this one. So image and semantic based query processing. Similarly, the same concept is real time buffer management. So video database management. So in multimedia streaming, the dynamic buffer allocation reduces the memory requirement. The essential practicalities of the buffer management for delay sensitive multimedia data defines alterations required by DBMS to sustain multimedia. Similarly, buffer allocation is very goal oriented, utilized for various database workloads in which targeted objective or goal is allocated for every workload. So catching, I'll tell you what does catching parts of media streams enhances streaming performance in two ways, which may be preferred in the near future. It decreases the numerous addresses to the disk storage. It minimizes the waiting time for initializing the stream. So please, this is what all about today's topic. We are not going in details for video database management system because that is not in your scope also. That is just an introduction I am going to give. Similarly, we have multimedia databases also, temporal databases also and active databases still learners if you have any doubt please you can post it over the discussion board sir will answer there and also we are going to have your doubt sessions also thank you everyone thank you sir